Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News, the VCT and the various reasons just getting back underway. Big games in EMEA, yes say big games in the Americas upcoming. Lots of reaction to NRG's age of their roster, FNS certainly gives his perspective on the matter, but also Som giving his thoughts on the Sentinel series upcoming and exactly what they expect from a mega series to start out stage 2. Very much on Twitter, your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, some drama going down on the KOI side, Barba has actually decided to, you know, he's going to leave the club effectively at the end of the season so there was discussion about this I know that lots of the fans were kind of celebrating about what they see as relatively poor performances potentially coming from one source always difficult to estimate really in Valorant and in any esports how important the coach actually has been to the success or failure of said team couple of results to go through Dapper and the boys took down Winthrop University yesterday of course we've got the new meta in play now but Oxygen Esports are definitely cementing themselves in some respects has one of the favourites, if not the favourites, going into Ascension. Big bounce back from M80 as well over the last couple of series they've played. They obviously made the decision to get rid of Nitro. Since then, they've 2 0 QOR. They've 2 1s Fame, which is effectively Fluffy Amers, isn't it? Yeah. So they took down the 2 1 victory here. Competitive series, this one actually, because Fluffy Amers took the game one before then getting bounced, especially on the Ascent 13 6, with an impressive second half on the Ascent. But, um, well, I guess it's the attack really that was the impressive part there, because defense descent sometimes does go like that but yes oxygen they're starting off 4-0 with um, an 8-0 map count they haven't lost a map yet oxygen so really impressive what they're doing this team was honestly my team to watch towards the start of the season and that certainly hasn't changed now and um, yeah as we saw the Winthrop University dub was pretty damn clean scubas here with 34 and 20 or 37 and 24 13 5 13 9 even on their pick so yeah oxygen looking good as time progresses in that region this is how things look in China, by the way. There's only been a few games going down so far, but this is how things looked a few days ago. And of course, on the 21st, things are going to get back underway in the Chinese region. But let's talk about EMEA, because that was going down yesterday. Some massive results in the context of the season last night, especially in terms of how things are going to go. So, yeah, Boaster and the EMEA boys of Fnatic, they had done a classic. I mean, here it is, a 1-1 series. They're down 8-0, and they come back to win it 13-11, right? How many times are we going to see Fnatic do this lately over the last couple of months? But it's not really a good sign, right? Because, look, BBL are good. But nonetheless, going down 8-0 map 3, like, how many of those realistically are you going to win? Not that many. And um, on this occasion, they do win this one. And BBL will be kicking themselves for losing the series in the way that they did. But, of course, this is their first series with no Leo on the roster. Hero comes in instead. They confirmed a few days ago he was going to be the player that was going to be stepping into the roster. Durka had a big step up here as well, actually, which was definitely worth noting because Durka was the one player I would say over the last couple of months that was most under the spotlight apart from the IGL obviously Boaster's going to be the most critiqued if they don't deliver but apart from that I would say out of Leo, Chronicle and Alpha and Durka, Durka was probably the poor you know the poorest performing player but now here he is on the Jets here he is on the Rays doing some serious damage they do lose the bind but then they bounce back on the Lotus and have another good series here, another great map here from Durka 13-11 but you know, down 8-0, making it 8-4, and then winning it eventually 13-11, absolute madness. BBL will be fuming for that one, but um, Fnatic do take the victory in the end. The other result, though, in EMEA, which was arguably more impressive and arguably emphatic, was Heretics versus Na'Vi. Heretics just absolutely crushed these guys. 12-2 on Sunset this year. Frankly, pretty ridiculous round win rate on the attack and the defense of that map as it stands. And a 2-0 versus Na'Vi, but a crushing 2-0. Like, Woot's nearly had 50 kills in two incredibly fast maps. Like, this was an absolute domination. I mean, it's ridiculous. They come back from the major, obviously the Masters in Shanghai... Patty Tech is now gone. Miniboo is back in since his exams are over. And they just cooked him. Like, not even close. 13-3 on the sunset. Woot was 26-9. The buying was 13-5 on Narby's pick. And he was 23-8 on the fade. So, um, this guy is absurd. I know that Ardis himself actually talked about it a couple of years ago. That, yeah, this Woot guy is legit. And he's going to be a serious force in the future. That certainly remains true. You know, on the KO and on the fade, dropping numbers like this. Just absurd performance, really. 94% cast, which is definitely right up there with the best you're going to see. And it doesn't seem to matter what you do to him. You're just going to run around and click heads and get all the kills. That's what makes Heretics a very scary team. Dominating Na'Vi in the way that they did. Despite Na'Vi seeming like one of the better teams in the region. But I'm 
and this is how things look so far in EMEA. We've got more games coming up today. Giant X versus Gentle Mates, of course. Navi for eSports is coming tomorrow. We've got Vitality Team Liquid. That's a big game as well in terms of the way that season is going to progress. Let's talk about some roster stuff, though. Some scrim bucks here from the 19th of June, as in yesterday. Interesting notes to take. Crew, 9-1 up on 100 Thieves. NRG, 7-3 up on TSM. Sentinels in a close game here with Furia. G2, 3-8 down to somebody. Evil Genius is 7-1 up versus somebody. And C9 versus Lev was a 3-0. So, yeah, what do you guys make of this? Certainly the most telling one possibly is the 100T crew, just because it's the most emphatic. And it's interesting to note, given how good 100T were at the event. But there's been talk about Evil Geniuses and Shazam, or where Shazam might go. Because after Shazam mentioned on stream that he's going to be going somewhere. The question has been, okay, where? What is the plan? And, um, well, Shazam has been in the big discussion of the last couple of days. This guy, Nomad Monad, comes out with another statement here. So, he was initially making the statement about the clip that Shazam had on stream. He speculated crew at the time. There's now been further speculation that it could potentially be MIBR. Now, okay, let's just hey, take a step back here for a second. When Shazam initially said what he said, the implication was that there was some sort of substitute requirement, which does, I suppose, imply some degree of, you know, visa problems that might be occurring for certain teams. So that maybe implies the MIBR thing as well. But then there's been talk that effectively Baby J, now known as Inspire, might be coming along as well. And um, this is some of the explanation as to why that could be the case. But I think Shazam maybe said on stream that's not going to be the case and he's not going to be playing with Inspire, which um, you know, obviously completely blows everything out of proportion. So who knows what's going on, but I thought I'd just mention it anyway that we're pretty sure that there is some movements going on with Shazam behind the scenes, but we really just don't know where and when and what exactly is going to be going on here. But let's talk about some of the drama on this, right? So these are the average ages of every team in in the Pro League and the way that it currently looks across various regions. So each main VCT roster. This is what we find. The youngest team in the world is actually DRX. Certainly after some of their recent changes, they're averaging an age of 20. And I'm guessing the league average here is, you know, pretty much 23, 22 point something, which is pretty, well, it, maybe it makes sense. It's slightly lower than, I actually talked about something very similar for Call of Duty on the COD channel today, which video is coming out soon on that one. But anyway, in COD, the average age is something like 23 and a half. In Valorant, it seems to be something like 22 and a half, 23. But um, yeah, we get Vitality, Carmine Corp, BLG, G to RIQ, all in the 22s, 21s. But as you get higher, you start to get some of the older players. Not old, precisely, but, um, you know, anything, any team that's averaging an age of 25 and above is going to be considered to have a pretty old lineup, and it's going to be true with the likes of Gentle Mates, Na'Vi, of course, due to Ardis. But the oldest team in the league, by quite some margin, actually, is NRG, over their five players, averaging an age of 26.2. Largely, of course, that is skewed by this man, bottom left. It's not exactly skews, because he's not that old, but um, FNS is 32, and therefore the numbers go up to some degree. Can he be good enough at 32? That's been one of the questions. This is some of the comments on the situation. Hold on, energy tweet? Where they tweet? About me? Come and join us, you guys. Welcome home, welcome home. We've missed you. He said, oh yeah, energy the oldest team, 26.2. He said my FNS says my bad. <laughs> that is criminal. Is there a correlation to the age and how good the team is? Let's see. Where's the best team? Heretics is at 20.2. Focus in the sevens. Heretics is here. Where's Gen G? Why? No, Gen G is up there. Sentinel also won. They're up there. Wait, Energy's winning everything. I'm 26 years old. I'm literally in my prime, right? I'm the fastest I've ever been in my life, in my fucking prime, and they're averaging 26.2. That means everybody on NRG is in their prime. Wow. They might win it all. They might actually win everything. No, 26 years old is actually the prime for every, like, e-athlete. I like to call us, I like to call ourselves the e-athletes. I've always been kind of like, every round we win is just so hype. Because um, that's just one step closer to the goal, you know, beating the opposite team. So, yeah, that's the biggest thing for me. So, uh, you're like the, the vibes merchant of this team, you know, because Chelsea is the vibes merchant for Sentinels. So I guess you are for, for energy, right? Yeah, except I'm just better than Chelsea. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I see what you mean. Uh, 
Well, speaking of those, is Sentinels first opponent, uh, stage yeah. two. Any thoughts on that? You know, any 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 kind of impressions you have for Sentinels? Um. Yeah. I mean, first off, the impressions they're they're insane. Uh, no matter what they, no matter what everyone else says about um split their split one performance not making Shanghai. Yeah. In my eyes, it doesn't matter. They won a Masters event fair and square. Um, the addition of John QT was probably the biggest move, probably, um, for Sentinels. Thus is kind of whatever, but um, I think John QT is a really good player. Um, yeah, I think I think Sentinels look dangerous. I think they definitely want to make a comeback for Split Two. For sure. Of course, the Sentinel series is going to be massive for both teams as time goes on. This was, of course, pretty funny if Met RG. VCD doesn't stand a chance. Here are all the old men of NRG. And, um, you know, the funny thing about this is, of course, that, you know, they've all the fight. Ethan, Chet, Crashies, Victor, and Som, and they've kept FNS exactly the same. So, pretty entertaining stuff. And as we see here in the replies from FNS, whoever runs this account, do not show yourself to me at any point. But this is part of the debate, right? The fact that FNS is now older, the fact that effectively what he's done over the last several months is pretty remarkable, as uh, Ryan says here. Crazy that FNS turned 47, okay, whatever, left NRG for three months, found a girlfriend, got a new cat, became a full-time streamer, and still returned to pro play before Shanks did. Is, uh, you know, pretty good copy pasta, I'm not gonna lie. But that, of course, is the debate. Yes, FNS, big brain, good IGL, but, um, you know, taking a year or so out of the game, is he going to be able to come back and be as good as he needs to be? You know, is he too old at 32 to have the impact required? I don't really think so. If the brain is still working, you've got four other fraggers on your team to deliver the goods, you know, I'm sure it'll be fine, but um, it is no doubt a talking point as to what we're going to see in terms of the slaying category when FNS and the boys turn up to play the big series against Sentinels not that far from now in just a couple of days' time, but, um, well, as we see here from plat chats it looks like nrg are going to take the clean w so if everyone's interested your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time